he promised a return when the French and Czechs had agreed to his plan. Their next meeting would also be in Germany, not in London, where the Godfather was afraid to be received with demonstrations of disapproval. And that there was no question of peace in Europe while Hitler continued to dominate it. And that therefore, the only hope was to say no, and the, and the sooner one said no, the easier it would be. The longer you delayed it, the stronger Hitler would get, uh, the more terrified the other small countries of Europe would become and have to make the best deals they could with him, which wouldn't be very good deals from their point of view, but would be better than nothing. And uh, in a very short time, uh, we, uh, this country and France, would find the whole of Europe, more or less, allied against us. And my father simply could not prevail upon Chamberlain to understand. Again and again, he suggested various uh, ideas that might at least give Hitler a hint that we were not going to sit by silently and al allow him to take more and more. He suggested mobilizing the fleet, which in his position as First Lord of the Admiralty, he was able to do. Chamberlain absolutely refused to allow him to do so. And um, eventually he realized that there was no means that Chamberlain, uh, on his first visit to Hitler at Berchtesgaden, came back, gave the cabinet a complete account of the way the conversations had gone. And my father could hardly believe his ears because Chamberlain appeared to be proud of what he had done. In fact, he had come back, he hadn't uh, achieved a single concession from Hitler. He'd given concessions all the way along the line. I think what one has to remember about Chamberlain was that, uh, that his horizons also actually were extremely narrow. He didn't know Europe at all. He that practically never traveled abroad. When he did, it was on a quiet holiday with Mrs. Chamberlain. He had virtually no foreign friends at all. He spoke no foreign languages. Uh, and um, I honestly think that, I mean, a, a few months before the whole uh, Czechoslovak crisis arose, I think he'd have been very hard put to have found the Sudetenland on the map. After the consultation with the British cabinet and with France, and the sending of the terms of suggested settlement to the government of Czechoslovakia, Mr. Neville Chamberlain left Heston again for his second meeting with Herr Hitler. European peace is what I am aiming at, and I hope that this journey may open the way to get it. As Chamberlain's plane left for Godesburg, there had been booze at Heston Airport. A mass observation poll on the 22nd of September showed that only 22% of the British public supported Chamberlain's policy and 40% opposed it. The proprietor of this hotel was a personal friend of the Fuhrer. He knew him when he was a corporal in the army, and he supported Hitler at a time when he had very few supporters. Mr. Chamberlain's plane landed at Cologne Airport, and the Premier was greeted by Sir Neville Henderson, the British ambassador in Berlin, and by Herr von Ribbentrop, the German foreign minister. There were smiles and hiles on all sides for Britain's ambassador for peace, who inspected stormtroopers before leaving the airport. Honour, it turned out, was a mere scutcheon. After Berchtesgaden, the British and French put pressure on the Czechs, who were forced to agree to cede parts of their country to the Godfather. Now, the dealer was on the way to tell Hitler the good news. Then the Premier left with an escort of fast cars and drove along the motor road to Godesburg, where the second series of talks would take place. A suite had been reserved for the Prime Minister at the Hotel Petersburg, high among the hills of the Rhine on the opposite side of the river from the hotel where Hitler was waiting. From his hotel room, Chamberlain could look out across the river to the Godfather's hotel room. The Hotel Drayson was a favorite haunt of top Nazis looking for relaxation. Chamberlain hoped his news would relax European tension and satisfy the Godfather. His colleagues had said no more concessions, but Chamberlain made them all the same. Perhaps he could have said, as Prince Hal did of Falstaff, 
I am bewitched with the rogue's company. If the rascal hath not given me medicines to make me love him, I'll be hanged. Als äh, Mr. Schemmerlein 1938 hier in Bad Godesfresh war, wohnte er hier oben auf dem Hotel Petersberg. Um zur Konferenz zu kommen, musste er von dem Petersberg eine Autostraße herunterfahren in das Tal hinein und fuhr dann diese heutige Bundesstraße 42 den Rhein entlang bis zu der Fähre Niederdollendorf. Diese Fähre, die war damals nicht wie heute. After a short rest, Mr. Chamberlain went to the Hotel Dresden to resume discussions with the Führer. The world waited as they met again. Ja, das ist hier also der sogenannte Ampere-Raum, Ampere-Saal, wo die Begegnung stattfand mit Chamberlain. Ich kann mich noch genau entsinnen. Wir sind hier, waren zwei, drei, drei runde Tische, wie gesagt, von der Redoute aus geliehen. Und äh, ich weiß noch hier, ich saß mit der Chamberlain, Adolf Hitler, und ich habe dann den Tee serviert. Well, Hitler arrived in the hotel on the 22nd of September at about 12 o'clock. He went upstairs to his old room, had a meal, and at about 2 o'clock he came down into this very room, which had been prepared as a map room with large tables on which a map, large-scale map of Czechoslovakia was laid out. And we know this from well, what is it? Kitchen boy, a kitchen boy who was working here about 15 years old, Theo Hoffmann, who wanted to see his Führer. And from, he went outside and looked through the window. And to his surprise, he saw the Führer bent over a map with a light, thick pencil and cutting Czechoslovakia into pieces, all on his own. Then Hitler went outside again, and at four o'clock, the negotiations began. Upstairs, very dramatic things happened. Mr. Chamberlain had only arrived with three officials of the foreign secretary and with no minister, whereas Hitler had arrived with Himmler, chief of police, Goebbels, chief of propaganda, Keitel, chief of the German Supreme Command, and many other big shots. And Hitler made a gesture to Chamberlain, you begin. And Chamberlain said, the French government, the British government, and including the Czechoslovakian government, is prepared to give the Sudetenland to Germany. There was a pause, and then Hitler said, do I understand you rightly, Prime Minister? that these three governments are prepared to cede Ge uh, the Sudeten to Germany, and Chamberlain said yes. There was a pause again, and then Hitler said, das geht nun nicht mehr. That can't be done anymore. Well, Mr. Chamberlain spent a restless night on the Petersburg. And when he got up in the morning, 